When building an aircraft carrier, you are constructing a floating, moving airport that generates its own power and provides everything necessary to sustain habitability for 5,000 souls for weeks at a time at sea, in all kinds of weather. An aircraft carrier is a roughly 350 yard long, 80 yard tall, 80 yard wide building made entirely of hardened metal. It really does not compare with building an airport because while both have planes taking off and landing, the similarities in there. It does not compare with building a skyscraper with similar square footage because each level is different in size, design, and function from the one above and below. Both an airport and a skyscraper take years to build and bring to full functionality. Yet an aircraft carrier must do so much more than either. In short, you are trying to build an airport, a nuclear power station, and an extended stay hotel for more than 5,000 people, plus the restaurants, shops, and medical facilities to keep them fed, happy, and healthy for months at a time. Then put all that on an island, with engines capable of pushing it to 33 knots or more, despite weighing 100,000 tons. Normally, it could take five to seven years unless it takes 10 to 12. Why the disparity? If you are designing a new class of carrier, it will take much longer than if you are building follow-on ships to the first in class. The length of time to build an aircraft carrier depends on some factors. Here are some of these factors. The first factor is new design and equipment. The required time to build it will be much longer for the new designs. The new design may require new equipment, a new setup, and a new method of construction. It will also take much longer if the new design of the aircraft carrier calls for the integration of new equipment. The new ship generally requires customized equipment and parts. This will lengthen the time of the completion. For example, the Ford class has a completely new catapult that works on electromagnetic principles instead of steam and arresting gear that uses a water-based turbine arresting gear. Both new systems had to be invented from scratch and they were troublesome. There were no real civilian cognates from which to develop these systems. The only thing close to the catapult would be a linear induction motor, but those are not really very close cousins. The second factor is modifications. New technological developments during the shipbuilding period and government's new demands will take the shipbuilder more time to complete its construction. And now let's have a look at the three phases of building an aircraft carrier. An aircraft carrier, or any ship for that matter, is built in three general phases or steps. The first phase is the laying down of the ship. The first phase involves the placing of the first parts of the keel on the dry dock or the slipway of the shipyard. In the past, keels can be seen outside of ships, running their whole lengths. Nowadays, keels are not seen outside. They are only visible inside the hulls of the ships. The second phase is the launching of the ship. In shipbuilding, launching is the process of transferring a ship to the water. It is a ceremonial process that every ship undergoes after the completion of its construction. And the third phase is the commissioning of the ship. This is when the ship is officially put into active service. An aircraft carrier undergoes many processes before it's commissioned for service. All of these processes impact the time it is ready to serve its purpose. Before an aircraft carrier is commissioned, it will first undergo sea trials. This is done to see whether the ship has deficiencies that need to be corrected. Commissioning of an aircraft carrier may take as long as three years. The latest aircraft carrier that was commissioned in the U.S. Navy is the USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78. It underwent the whole process for eight years because it had to incorporate newer technology. The ship was laid down in November 2009. October 2013 was when it was launched. It was finally commissioned in May 2017. 
Here are the five biggest aircraft carriers in the world and the time it took their shipbuilders to construct each one of them. Number one, Gerald R. Ford class. The Gerald R. Ford class of supercarriers boasts of a full load displacement of 100,000 tons. Its initial delivery to the U.S. Navy, the USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, was made in May 2017. This class of ships is the largest aircraft carrier in the world. Construction of the first ship in this class started on August 11, 2005, but the aircraft carrier was actually laid down on November 13, 2009. It was eventually launched on October 11, 2013. Therefore, from 2005 to 2013, it took the shipbuilder eight years to finish its construction. Number two, Nimitz class. The Nimitz class of supercarriers is the second biggest in the world. Its total displacement is 97,000 tons. The first ship of this class was put in service in May 1975. The class of ships can operate for about 50 years before they are decommissioned. The shipbuilder, Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia, started building this ship in 2003. In 2009, the shipbuilder completed its construction. Therefore, it took the shipbuilder around six years to complete the construction. Number three. Queen Elizabeth class. The total displacement of the Queen Elizabeth class is 65,000 tons. That makes this class of aircraft carriers the largest in the service of the Royal Navy. The HMS Queen Elizabeth, the first vessel in this class, went on sea trials in June 2017. It will enter the service of the Royal Navy in 2020. The order for this class of ships was announced on July 25, 2007 by Des Brown the Defense Secretary of the British government. Sea trials started in June 2017, so it took the shipbuilder around 10 years to complete its construction. Number four, Admiral Kuznetsov. The Russian Navy has only one operational aircraft carrier, the Admiral Kuznetsov. Like the INS Vikramaditya, it was built in Ukraine's Black Sea shipyard. The total displacement of this ship is 58,599 tons. The order to build this ship was given to the Black Sea Shipyard on March 3, 1981. They started building the ship on April 1, 1983. The aircraft carrier was finally launched on December 6, 1985. From the time it started construction to the time it launched, it took the shipbuilder two years to build the Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier. And at number five, we have Liaoning. The only official aircraft carrier of the People's Liberation Army Navy is Liaoning. It was originally built as one of Admiral Kuznetsov class carriers of the USSR. The original names of the ship are Varyag and Riga. The order for this carrier was given to Mikolaev South in 1983. Construction began on December 6, 1985, and was finally launched on December 4, 1988. Therefore, this aircraft carrier took three years to build. The ship was later sold to a shell company in China in 1998. Later in 2002, the ship was acquired by the Chinese Navy. In short, some aircraft carriers took much longer to build, around 10 or 12 years. As technology improves, the construction time will decrease. Perhaps in the future, aircraft carriers will only take a year or less to be built.